باب المدينة وحامي نبينا باب المدينة وحامي نبينا علي منهج علي تلهج باسمك املاك السماء علي صالة وعلي جالة علي بتار ودماء علي سجدة على خدة للعلي دمعة هما علي غيرة وعلي غيرة من كفول فاطمة It's a great pleasure and a great honor and a privilege to be here today and especially talk about the teachings of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. Before I delve into the great world of wisdom, before I delve into the great world of wisdom that was unraveled by the sermons and the statements of Hazrat Ali alayhi salam, I first um, briefly want to mention just three things in brief, very brief. First, I highly appreciate the very organized way in which this conference has been um, finalized. Um, very disciplined, very organized, very well done. So we must all appreciate the organizers of this conference. Secondly, Secondly, um, I am required, because of my position in government, to give you a disclaimer that all that I'll say reflects my own opinions, although I would love the government to adopt my opinions, uh, but I am required to say that at this time, I think my opinions are my personal opinions and not reflective of the government. And third, the most important introductory part, um, and which is actually inspired by Manachwani's speech yesterday, that I want to dedicate my speech today which is, as you know, talking about the governance and leadership principles as enunciated by Imam Ali alayhi salam. I want to dedicate my humble contribution uh, to Bibi Zainab salam alayhi who is today we are also, uh, we have... As you know, we are dedicating the whole conference to Imam Ali alayhi salam, but today is also the anniversary of the death of Bibi Zainab salam alayhi And I want to dedicate my speech to one sentence, just one sentence that she uttered in the court of Yazid. And that is so much linked to the main framework of my thought today. Bibi has said to Yazid, the end of all tyrants is agony. The end of all tyrants is agony, unquote. And I link this to the major theme of my talk, how Imam Ali had talked about tyranny and oppression, and how he explained that the only way to defeat tyranny and oppression is by establishing a system which is based on the foundations of justice, education, equality, and well-being of the ordinary people. Now there is a lot of debate that we have in the modern sense whether Islam is compatible to democracy or not, whether all the great ideas about rule of law, about the criminal justice system, about equality, about human rights, whether these are all really very modern in their essence or is there something that these ideas gain from the great traditions, including the Islamic tradition. My task today is that I'll explain to you in some detail what were the principles of governance enunciated by Hazrat Ali and there is no need to even discuss the credibility or the authenticity of what Imam Ali said because we know very clearly there is a one hadith on which there is no dispute there is one of those many hadiths on which there is no dispute, but this one specially, which says, I am the city of knowledge, and Ali is the gate. And we also know the second part of it, which says, anyone who desires knowledge must enter the city through its gate. And as we know, when we talk about any house, the door or the entrance usually is a reflection of the whole house. The entrance is normally also uh, beautiful, 
is it of at least as much value as the house is of? So that's the purpose of referring to this is that Imam Ali gained or achieved or acquired all the knowledge that he was talking about from the Prophet of Islam, of course. So what were the main five principles? Because it is so important that in addition to the spiritual foundation of Islam, which is of course its central essence, which which Jali had talked very eloquently and very articulately. In addition to that, Islam provides a certain environment, a certain framework, a certain framework which creates that environment in which achieving this spirituality becomes possible. So what is that framework? My plan is that I'll talk about those five principles, then I will link those with what the modern political science tells us. Because after, from, after all, from Socrates and Aristotle to the modern political scientists, everyone was talking about what is the essence of government? What is the role of government? Uh, what are the responsibilities of a state? What are the rights of the people? And of course, with all scholarship around the world, we have come to a conclusion, or in the modern sense, we have achieved a state, at least in its ideal sense, what it should provide to the human beings. So I'll try to compare what Imam said through his five principles and what has been achieved by the modern political science in terms of its own scholarship and learning. That's the task. That's I'll try to do in the next about 15 minutes or so. So first of all, the five major principles, and I did this study um, on Imam Ali, uh, not only based on Nehjah Balagha, which of course contains so many pearls of wisdom, but also I, I had the opportunity to collect works from around the world including a book, um, incidentally, which I bought or purchased when I was just walking out of Madinatul Manavara, the, the main haram. And there's a small shop, those of you who had a chance to go recently, there's a very small shop just outside the north gate of the haram. And where there was this book right on the top about Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, I was very glad, of course, to see that book there. It explains his principles of guidance. Um, so I have looked at the works of Saudi scholars, May, some of those may have a bias, may not have. Uh, others from Iran, the modern uh, political scientists in the West who have looked at it, the whole issue from a very objective uh, and neutral sense. So all my quotations in, will be in the sources are about 30 sources in total, but in addition to natural Raga as well. The first principle and the very first question is about the criterion of leadership. In a state or in any government, or in any place which is to be administered, how to select leadership and how to become a leader. And there's a one sentence, a one single quotation from Hazrat Ali Alayhi Salaam, which is so insightful, which is so profound, um, that which amazes me. It said very clearly that anyone who wants to become a leader should prepare himself through service to humanity. That's the central principle. Anyone who wants to become a leader should first become a servant of humanity because that's the central principle of the a trade of a leadership. Second to this, when Imam Ali was asked, so who should be the leader in the political sense? His statement was again very categorical. He said, the most rightful among you who should become your leader is a person who is not only the most competent but also the most knowledgeable. A very clear cut criterion was provided as to the leadership. The third principle, and I am still talking about the very first principle, who should be the leader. The third criterion that was provided was only that person can be, and I am paraphrasing from, from all the sources, the third criterion is a leader should be completely selfless, not someone who brings him or herself right in front claiming leadership. And here, Imam was not talking about the politics of the time. This was pure discourse on political governance and management. The third principle was, as I mentioned, avoid vanity, be selfless. And last but not the least, Imam said, that personal views of a leader 
should not become the basis of his judgment. So very clearly, the criterion of leadership as it is provided is competence, is knowledge, is your being above your selfish interests. That was the first principle, the criterion of leadership. Secondly, from all these statements and the sermons and letters of Imam that I've read, the most important of course being letter to uh, Malik ibn Ashtar, but there are so many other places where Imam also talked about these things. The second principle is the well-being of the people. And again, it is amazing that almost, I would argue, even one-fourth of all the discourse of Imam Ali talks about the rights of very ordinary people. For instance, in one, in one instance he said that whenever a leader will invite the people to come to him for complaints and their grievances, and Imam said, any, every leader should dedicate some time every day some time should be ded dedicated on a daily basis to listen to those grievances. But Imam said, be clear, there should be no distinction between rich, poor, powerful and the weak. And then he said, that when those different people from different backgrounds come to the leader to express their concerns, there should be no one from the security sector, and I'm using modern phraseology, they were these should be no one armed or from the security of the leader present there. It's a very, today it's a common sense idea, but it was so insightful. Imam was saying, so that the poor person in the audience of the leader should not feel humiliated or should not feel that what if I complain about this governor or this leader who's corrupt, who's humiliating me, who's being oppressive. So Imam said, Whenever this meeting takes place between the leader and his people, it should be just one-to-one -one almost, with no state functionaries available there. At another point, there is a detailed discourse, and I am now talking about the second provision. First I talked about the criterion of leadership, now I am talking about the, the, welfare, the nature of the welfare of the state, or the nature of a welfare state, which Imam wanted to create. The details with which the details of, of the taxation system that Imam provides are also very insightful. Again, it was unheard of at that time, even before that time, to talk about if a, a tax collector has to talk to people, he should not go and knock at their doors. These are very clear mentions in, in the speech. Imam Ali said the person from whom tax has to be collected should be called outside the city and then a discussion to, should take place and anyone who says that I am not liable to pay any tax should not be bothered. At a third stage, now within this reference of, of welfare state, Imam met a person who happened to be a Christian and who was seen in a very terrible plight, very old, uh, was not in, in a position to work hard. Imam said he saw him in that situation and said, called the people around him and said to them that you have used this person and manipulated this person when he was young and when he had energy in his body and now you have left him on his own and then he remarked, state should provide all his requirements and necessities. Again, a modern principle in a welfare state and last but not the least, within this context of a welfare system, Imam so categorically said that he was talking about the Christians of Najran. He warned his governors and other people by saying, the property of this Christian is as valuable, as sacred as your property. His life is as sacred as your life. The point I am deducting from this is not only that he built the, the foundations of a modern welfare state but it was also the idea of a state where the rights of minorities are fully protected. Now I move on to the third principle. The third principle of this modern governance system was built around the justice system. And there are so many beautiful quotations, but the one I just want to um, share with you says that anyone who abandons equity and justice is leading the nation towards oppression and tyranny. And in Edelukayin, he clearly 
talked about building a system of judiciary where, and this is again a very modern idea which we, we heard in the modern sense from Montesco, um, who talked about separation of powers, separation of institutions. Imam Ali very clearly in his letter to Malik Ibn Esther, Esther said, judiciary or the judge of a state should under no circumstances be answerable to the head of the state. So the executive should not have a defining control over judiciary. This is so clearly defined in your arms letter. Going further on, when he provides all the details about what should be the criterion of a judge, it is also mentioned in that letter that those judges should be constantly monitored. The point I am referring to is this establishment of a justice system. If you look at the modern political science theory and you look at the letter of Imam Ali, which specifically talks about the modern judicial system, they are so comparable and they are so much, in my assessment, many modern political scientists uh, most certainly built their idea of modern democracy and even modern judicial system on the teachings of Imam Ali. The fourth point I want to mention, which is again within this structure of administrative system that is to be built was about education. Education is most certainly the pillar of any modern educational, any modern, not only educational system, but any modern political system. And that pillar is built upon the very statement when a leader has to be selected or elected solely on the base of his qualification of competence and knowledge that is setting a trend. That is establishing a principle and even at various other points and positions Imam Ali categorically said on study history the emphasis that Imam made on learning of history was so amazing and he clearly talked about that civilization go growth and I am just paraphrasing but taking all these quotations that I am mentioning to you not as from any commentary but from the main sources of what Imam had said he had said Civilizational growth and its understanding depends upon your knowledge of history. At another point, Imam had so very clearly argued that knowledge is power. And those who want to establish justice should have a wide base of knowledge. And he was not referring only to the religious knowledge, but also knowledge base that the humanity had attained at that time or economy or the scholarship or the learning at the time had acquired it in terms of legacy from various different civilizations. The last point after these four principles, competent leadership, a welfare state idea, modern education system, a modern justice system, last but not the least was the idea of rules of engagement and, and laws pertaining to warfare. There was emphasis at every point in Imam's teachings that your army should never be the first one to start any hostilities against a force. Secondly, he argued that if war begins, then, and you succeed, then there were very clear provision of the laws of war. Don't go against the wounded. Don't raise your hand against children and women. And this whole theory is so relevant to the modern laws of war, where he, we hear a lot about the just war tradition. Um, I will encourage you to look at the Geneva Conventions um, of laws of war. And it is amazing how some of the principles enunciated by the Imam on the laws of war, in terms of the rights of the people, even your opponents, how that was central to the very idea of the teachings of Imam related to laws of war. So the crux of the argument that I am making is the modern political system so clearly is built upon equality, rule of law, rights of minorities and pluralism. And the principles of modern governance system provided by Imam were exactly based on these foundations. Without a capable leader, there is no justice system. Without 
an educational foundation, literacy, there is no emancipation, there is no enlightenment. So the point at the, at the end will be that in terms of the modern challenges faced by humanity today, and those are so clear to us, uh, the global inequality, uh, the preponderance of disproportionate use of force, inequality between haves and have-nots, lack of justice around the world despite all the modern technologies and all the great advancement of human sense of achievement and human scholarship, despite that, all the major challenges that you face in the world relate to disproportionate use of force, to inequality, to lack of merit, to lack of provision of rights. The model that Imam Ali salam and his teachings had built provide direct answers to the challenges faced by human beings today. And this I conclude with just one thought where there are people here on, on the panel, uh, both of them very learned scholars will be um, in the best possible position to answer that question, whether all those who challenge the learning and scholarship of Imam Ali, were it was, was it only a bias and jealousy through the personality which we know was there, but whether they were also challenging the idea of governance and a modern state where equality will be the prime factor, where justice will be provided to everyone, where education will be a right of every human being. All those who challenge Imam Ali or who have any grudge against him, it is not only their personal bias, which is also absolutely there, but it is challenging the very egalitarian, egalitarian nature of Islam. It is the new foundation, a modern understanding of governance that has been challenged by them. They don't want a system where there is equality and justice and where the socio-economic rights of the people are the fundamental right. When Imam had taken over, and I'll conclude with this, when Imam Ali had taken over as the Caliph, his first statement was, I am here to reform and to create prosperity. We so often miss this point that Islam had brought the very central ideas of an economic system where people had equal right to economic prosperity and that was what he mentioned as the foundation in his speech and I encourage you to go and not only read the speech of Malik ibn Ashtar, letter that Imam wrote to Malik ibn Ashtar but also his inaugural speech where these fundamentals were principle were, were mentioned very clearly and directly and the most interesting part, that in most of the teachings about good governance and leadership, these were mentioned and talked about in a very, not only pragmatic, but very neutral fashion. There was never any consistent reference uh, to any religious theology, which is of course, that's spirituality and, and the whole purpose of uh, humanity is, is at the core of it, but it is the, the model that Imam Ali had built through education, justice, is something which provides light to the modern political thinking of how to govern and how um, to provide a change and build the foundations of a world where everyone is equal, where, where everyone um, attains the rights they have and where everyone has the courage to stand up and defy oppression and stand up and build a better future. Thank you very much.